guys, it is Erin or Gimme Yarn 418 and I am here with TGIF. Thank God it's finished. Um, I think it's been about two and a half weeks since I've made a video. Um, I don't have too, too many things considering how long it's been, but I have some bigger projects so at the same time it's been a little bit more. I also have a whole bunch of stuff that I am working on, but that's not done yet. I'm working on some things for Christmas gifts. Um, I'm working on some socks. Um, I'm working on some beautiful socks that Rudy decided he wanted to help me with. Um, do you want to see what that looks like? Because I'll put in a picture right here. Yeah, so don't worry because Rudy didn't destroy the sock at all. He just, um, tangled the ball. Um, I have it almost completely untangled so I can finish the sock and it's actually the second sock. So it wasn't as big a deal. If he had like ripped a hole in the sock I probably would have cried for a month or two. <laughs> but he didn't so nothing, not really a big deal. It's just one of the casualties of having a dog, a puppy. And at the same time even if he destroyed the sock I have plenty more socks I could could knit. So I have one sock finished, so I have a hoe, a half object, um, but I don't have, I have a hoe and a half. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a double hoe, I don't know. But anyway, um, I hope I didn't offend anybody by saying that, but I watch podcast and they talk about half objects and they call them hoes. And um, I actually have a bag that says that's a good looking hoe with a picture of a sock on it. So when I say ho, I'm talking about a half-finished object, or in other words, one sock. That is complete. Totally off topic. Um, everybody did find Rhinebeck last time. So what I'm going to ask now is when you find Rhinebeck, PM me. Because I don't want people to give it away for other people. You guys are pretty good, though. I thought I was hiding them really well, and my Boston accent just came out. Because I said, I thought, when I talk fast, it comes out. I thought I was hiding him very well, and everybody found him in, like, 30 seconds. So, I don't know. I'm going to have to get more creative, I guess. I don't know. Um, he is hidden today. It's kind of in an easy spot, so we'll see who finds him. Um, but on to my finished objects. What should I show first? Hi, Rudy. Rudy's here with us. Um, no, buddy. He says, I want to try on the hats. I want to try on the hats. So we're just going to go outside. Kristen, say hi. Everybody always asks about you. Just wave. Kristen says hi. She's working. She would love to be in more videos, but, you know, somebody has to... Somebody has to make the yarn money. Okay, I guess we'll start with the biggest object. The biggest object I finished is my Rhinebeck sweater. Um, this is the Saturn sweater from Interweave, Interweave Crochet. Um, it isn't the sweater that I intended on making for Rhinebeck. I am in the process of knitting uh, the Dark and Stormy sweater, but I just knew that with it being my busy time of year and everything, there's no way I was going to get it done, and I didn't want to stress. So... This, it doesn't have buttons yet, so this is the Saturn sweater. Um, it is a completely seamless sweater. I will say there are some errors in the pattern if you get the, um, if you get the magazine, but it's really easy to, to fudge, because that's what I did, because I was actually one of the first people who crocheted it. Um, I love the sweater. I love how it came out. I have absolutely no complaints. It's all crocheted in one piece and all these stripes, ooh, my stripes look off, but all my stripes, all the stripes are, are chain, what's it called, chain embroidered on uh, with a slip stitch, which I had never done before. Um, there's supposed to be seven stripes, but I only did six because I liked how six looked. There are supposed to be three stripes. Nope, this is how many stripes are supposed to be on the sleeves. Um, and I 
was pretty, tr I used some of the colors that were called for in the pattern and some that were not. I switched some of them out and I'm realizing this is a little, still a little damp from being washed. I made this out of, it calls for a DK weight, um, but I made this out of Cascade 220 Sport. It took, one, two, it took seven skeins of the gray and then like a couple yards of, um, the yellow and the green, and then about a half a skein of the orange. And I love it, and I think um, this is the first crocheted sweater that I actually think is quasi-flattering on me. Um, it was very easy. Like I said, there are a few errors in the pattern, but you can figure it out. If um, you do knit this sweater, or crochet this sweater, I should say, and you have some problems, I'd be happy to try and help you um, to figure it out. I have... My yoke, which is the top, is riddled with counting errors and stuff like that. But when you put it on, you really can't tell. So it's a very forgiving pattern, and I just love it. I got some, um, the buttons are going to be, they are gray with a black outline. Um, and this will not be a buttoned sweater. The buttons will be purely um, cosmetic. But I love it and I think it came out great and that means that Kristen and I both have a Rhinebeck sweater and they're both done and Rhinebeck is still two weeks away. It's on the 20th. Two weeks away. Yay! Two weeks from tomorrow. So that's my sweater. The next thing I worked on was I worked on some slippers. Um, the first pair I made, okay, I only have one slipper. I have only have one slipper. Okay, there are two of these, but I think this is still in the um, finished objects bag. These still need to be felted. These are the Duffers Revisited, um, which is a pay pattern on Ravelry, and it comes in a number of sizes. And I have to tell you, these are so fast. I cannot wait to see how they felt because they're really fast and they're really fun. Um, the whole thing is knit w holding two strands of yarn together, I think. Yes, I just wanted to double check because it's been about a week and a half since I worked on these. So the first pair I made was a pair for Kristen. And I'll put in a picture to prove that there are two. I'll put it in right here. So that's Kristen wearing the slippers for me to post on Ravelry. Um, I knit this um, out of Lion Brand wool that I got a couple of years ago at Ocean State Job Lot for like $2 a skein. Um, and it took about two skeins of gray and about one skein of red. And these are Ohio State colors, which is Kristen's favorite football team. Moving right along. I then decided that, of course, that I needed a pair of Duffers Revisited, so I knit myself a pair. Um, this is knit out of the gray, is the same Lion Brand wool that Kristen's was made of, and the top was Ella Ray, an Ella Ray wool. And I love them, and I can't wait to see how they're felted. So this is like, it's technically, I mean, it's finished because all the knitting's done, but I wanted to show them to you before I put them in the wash because they take it about a week to dry and um, that's the only thing about felting is they take a week to dry you have to try them on when they're still damp so they can mold to your feet but I like them and I have a feeling I'm gonna maybe be making a lot more of these I think Rudy might be being fresh outside because Kristen just was not happy um, the next thing I made was, um, I got an order for a Daddy and Me set. How cute is that? Um, someone said that their nephew is going to be one and they wanted to get a set for their nephew. And, um, I said, oh, well, I do this deal where the pricing is a little different if you buy two hats. And he's like, oh, wouldn't it be cool for, you know, the dad and the son to have the same hat? So I had only made this set, this hat. In an American girl size because someone had sent me a picture and said, oh, can you make my doll? Hi, Rudy! Um, can you make my doll a matching hat? And I did, and he said, oh, that's the hat I want. So it was all kind of trial and error, and how cute are those? 
How cute. How, how cute, cute, cute. Anyway. Whoa, they're falling. <laughs> anyway. Oh, my gosh. Um, this is for a one-year-old who I was told is uh, a chubby one-year-old. And I always try and make sure, I would rather the hats be a little big and then the child can wear it for a little bit longer. And then this is an adult, an adult-sized hat, which I rarely make because most of the people I know wear a child's large, or which I consider is like um, a woman's small. Um, so it was that, and I'm so excited, and I gotta take pictures after this so I can put those in the mail. First, first time in a long time I've I've had ordered things, order items, items that have been ordered. I speak good English. Um, that I've had to show you. So, yeah. The next thing I made, I just whipped this up today because I don't know. I just felt like doing something different. We have a show on Sunday, so I'm a little crocheted out of my usual stuff so I decided that we needed some little decorations so I found this pattern online it's a free pattern I think there's a link from Ravelry to a blog I will look up everything and I will put it in the description when I do my links and I made a little pumpkin and I'm gonna make a couple more to go on our mantle and I love it I think it's really cute I told Kristen we are now decorated for fall um, the next thing I made was people, I'll take my hair down so I can try these on. Oh, I need a haircut. Um, I made a beard, a beard hat. I'm calling this the, um, the sugar bear hat from Honey Boo Boo. Here comes Honey Boo Boo. So, ready? I never try hats on for you guys, but you guys are in for a treat. This is what I would look like if I was one of the seven dwarfs. Oh, actually, I think seven dwarfs have white beards, don't they? This one is a little bit small for me, but I think it's kind of cute. <laughs> I don't know what that face was, but it was kind of funny. So this, um, I just kind of made it up as I went along. It's my regular, my typical hat, and then I just fooled around with the beard <laughs> and um, I don't know if I'll be making more of those they were it was amusing to me so next I made two monster hats I had seen something similar to this in a blog uh, not a blog a vlog and I looked online and I couldn't find anything I think they said they had tested the pattern for it so from, I went from memory and I tried it myself and I made two little Cyclops hats which I think they came out kind of cute. I don't, I don't know how I feel about them, but I think they're kind of cute. So that's that. And last but not least, I finished my worm hat, which is knit out of um, Jojo Jojo Land Rhythm. It took three skeins. Um, Jojo Land Rhythm is has long color changes, and it's 100% wool. Bejeweled Hedgehog likes Jojo Land Rhythm too. We're like. Yeah, we're like yarn, yarn twins. So I made this hat for myself, and I'm not a big hat person. I don't think I look all that great in hats, but I like this hat. I don't think I like, I don't like how it looks on me, but I do, I do like it, and it's comfortable, and it's warm, and it actually doesn't look too bad right now. So yeah, we'll keep this on for the rest of the video. I think that's all I have for this week. Um, I'm so glad that everybody, um, took some time out of their busy days to watch me. Um, I can almost guarantee you that I will not have a video before Rhinebeck. After Rhinebeck, I, I've i asked Kristen to do some um, video recording at Rhinebeck. Not so much with um, like vendors there, but just so you guys can all see what it is like. Um, it is just, it's phenomenal. And I know of more people now because I watch a lot of knitting vlogs, not vlogs, a lot of knitting podcasts and I'm going to try really hard to, you probably wouldn't guess this unless you watched my first video, but I have a really hard time warming up to people, not warming up, but I'm really shy, I'm painfully shy, I don't like any attention to be drawn to myself. Um, and there's a meetup to meet all the podcasters at Rhinebeck 
and I want to go because there's a lot of people that I I watch and there's some people that I watch and I um, consider you know acquaintances that I have talked to occasionally that I'd like to meet and I know Ron Strong is going to be there um, so I am my goal is to push myself uh, beyond my limits not out of, not beyond my limits but to push beyond my comfort zone and try and meet some of these people um, hi Rudy I I don't know I think that might be part of the reason that I like knitting is because it's it's such a quiet and it can be a solo or group activity um, so yeah now I've just I've just rambled on for three minutes about nothing and the dogs say hello <laughs> okay so on that note I'm gonna say goodbye thank you so much for watching and until next time bye bye